What's going on guys? Spot here for Destiny. Today we are going to be taking a close look at Atheon's epilogue and auto rifle. Now it's a legendary auto rifle only acquired via completing the Vault of Glass and it could be on normal or hard difficulty. The nice thing about it, the really nice thing about it is that it is one of I believe only four primary weapons that deal elemental damage, in this case void damage. Atheon's story is still being written. The wielder holds the pen. So we're going to take a look at all the upgrades. Now what I'm going to do with these reviews is any uh, raid gear or specialty gear like from the Queen's Wrath or from um, the Iron Banner, I'm going to fully upgrade all the weapons completely before reviewing them. The regular legendaries, I'm only going to get to the, the last three damage upgrades and I'm going to review them, alright? Because I don't really don't have that much Ascendant Energy to be able to upgrade all of those weapons, okay? So obviously Atheon's Epilogue is fully upgraded. We're just going to take a look at these stats here first. Uh, the rate of fire is the highest you can possibly get for any weapon, okay? But, on the flip side, the impact is pretty much the lowest that you're going to see for any weapon. Uh, range is obviously on the low side, being an auto rifle. Our stability, and remember, the uh, auto rifles were nerfed in a recent patch. I'm not going to get into the very specific details about that, but... Just note that they're a little less effective than they were a few weeks ago, right? Stability isn't bad, it's approaching mid-range, and the reload looks pretty good, okay? Now, in comparison, I have three other auto rifles, legendary, two exotics, and a legendary, and the stats for Atheon's epilogue match exactly Dr. Nope, all right? Uh, the magazine size differs a little bit, but I'll get into that because uh, we have ex basically the extended mags upgrade on it right now. Uh, normally, it's a magazine size of 70, so it's slightly less than the Dr. Nope, which sits at 72, okay? Now, in comparison, if you look at the Monte Carlo, the Monte Carlo's rate of fire is slightly less than Atheon's Epilogue, but the impact is, uh, well, more than double what, uh, what we see for Atheon's. Um, the range is a lot better as well on the Monte Carlo. And uh, the other stats are pretty similar. On the flip side, when we look at the Suros regime, the rate of fire is uh, is even lower. But look at that impact. That impact is significant and is probably why I see that in my kill feed or my death feed, I should say, quite a bit when I play in the Crucible. Because that Suros regime is used a lot because of that high impact number. Yes, your damage, you can upgrade it to 300 attack, but it's that impact number that has the most significant impact on, no pun intended, on how much damage you're going to do to an enemy player or even in PvE, alright? So let's take a closer look at the upgrades that are available. Again, Void Damage, going to be highly useful, perfect for the Vault of Grass, Glass Raid, uh, specifically in a couple of areas, and I'll go over that um, after we look at these stats. But uh, also in PvE, especially when you're going up again against uh, some Vex enemies like Praetorians or Minotaurs, or any other enemy that has a void shield, you're going to take down their shields pretty quickly, all right? So taking a look at uh, the first set of upgrades, we have three options here. The first being the red dot ores, accurized sight for precise fire. And you can see how the, um, the stats change, right? So this one's going to give you additional reload, but reduce your stability and range. And then here you're going to uh, reduce your stability and reload uh, for an increase in range. So let's take a look at the red dot. And uh, honestly... The red dot, I would I'd probably suggest, so that's the red dot right there, I would probably suggest going for either the red dot or the true sight. I really don't see the point of having a range lens. You're going to get a bit of range uh, at the expense of stability. Real, I don't really see the point. So that's the true sight IS. Let's take a look at that. Not bad. Nice green color. And let's take a look at the final one, which is the scope. Oops, did I select it? Maybe I didn't. My bad. No, I did. Range lens. There we go. Maybe it didn't, just didn't update. There we go. Okay, we got it. There's the range lens. So, I mean, it looks okay, but honestly, on an auto rifle, I, I, I prefer this on, like, a scout rifle um, or a pulse rifle, perhaps, but definitely not on an auto rifle. So, I'm going to actually switch it back to... Uh, I want uh, better stability, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the red dot. I don't mind the red dot, so we're going to keep it there. The next upgrade is Persistence. This weapon grows more accurate the longer it is fired. And we're going to show you a little bit on the accuracy side here in a second. We have our first damage upgrade, and then we have a few options. This one being the Field Scout, which is basically extended mag, maximum ammo capacity. Your magazine is 84. Your total 
uh, ammo size is 999. You can hold 999 rounds. Now, if you do switch that out for flare magwell or perfect balance, you're going to end up with a magazine size of 70 and a total um, ammo capacity that you can hold of 715. So it does drop significantly. If you're doing PVE, I would probably suggest the Field Scout. If you're doing PVP in the Crucible, then Perfect Balance may be the way to go. Um, usually in PVE, you're going to be firing this off at, at sort of a shorter range, uh, whereas with Perfect Balance, you know, even maybe going with the range lens, uh, possibly, but it's just going to help you get those headshots a little more easily before you get killed, okay? So we're going to take a look at... Um, so we've got an improvement in reload with a flared magwell, an improvement in recoil. So let's take a look and see what the recoil is. Now, as far as the fire rate, so I'm just going to fire this, hip fire this, and see where the recoil go goes. I'm not going to control it with the uh, left analog stick. Now, keep in mind, this Atheon's epilogue will fire at approximately 884 rounds per minute, which is quite significant. As I said, it's probably got the... Well, it does definitely have the highest rate of fire of any weapon, okay? So quite a bit of a vertical recoil and a slight horizontal recoil. We're going to actually ADS this time around and see what we get. And we're still going vertical, obviously not nearly as much as when we're hip firing. So definitely not, you know, with these auto rifles, definitely not a, a hip firing gun. I like to hip fire though, but, you know, your, your recoil is going to be ridiculous unless you can control it, okay? So let's switch to the uh, perfect balance and see what kind of recoil we get. Now, I don't think it's going to change significantly um, when you're hip firing. So it's going to be approximately the same without that upgrade when you're hip firing, but when you're ADSing, you're going to have a lot more control. And make note of the uh, the reload speed, okay, guys? The reload speed here. So we do have... I mean, it's not significant. It, I, I, I didn't really see a significant uh, change in recoil there compared to when we were running the field, um, the uh, extended mags. So let's go back and do the flared mag well. And I think our reload was approximately um, three seconds or so without this upgrade. And it's about two and a half. So I think it only shaves about a half second off your reload. So not a significant advantage at all, in my opinion. So again, my recommendation is to keep it on Field Scout, especially for PvE. If you do find that uh, you're having a difficulty controlling the recoil, then try Perfect Balance when you're playing PvP. All right? And, uh, you know, if you're getting shot at range, then your better choice might be not even an auto rifle going with a scout rifle or possibly trying out the range lens. Let's take a look at the final upgrades. We have glass half full. The bottom half of each magazine causes additional damage, and we can take a look and see what impact that has. Uh, we have four more damage upgrades. The last three obviously requiring ascendant energy. And then this upgrade, which is only available to weapons that come from the Vault of Glass, um, the Oracle Disruptor. This weapon deals bonus damage to Oracles in the Vault of Glass. Definitely helpful when you're running the Vault on hard difficulty. All right? So we're going to take a closer look. We're going to look at uh, some gameplay from the Vault, possibly some, uh, some PvP and some regular PvE, and uh, see how well Atheon's Epilogue performs. All right, so here we are in the Vault of Glass, and uh, definitely that additional Oracle damage is going to be helpful. We're playing on hard difficulty. Now, what I will say, though, and this is post-patch, I believe this is post-patch footage of Atheon's Epilogue ever since they uh, they nerfed the, uh, the auto rifles, and I would say that it's not entirely useful on the Praetorians, okay? It'll take down goblins, I mean, like a, a, any other regular auto rifle, and when I mention the void damage taking down the Praetorians, versus level 30 Praetorians, you're going to have a difficult time. You're gonna go through an entire clip or magazine, and even if you have the field scout option on, you're gonna go through an entire clip. So I've been switching to my void damage um, uh, fusion rifle, you're going to go through an entire clip and you'll probably take down the shields but and then some health, but you're still going to have to reload and continue firing on a Praetorian here on hard difficulty, all right? But definitely for the Oracle, so in this section, uh, this is probably one of the only sections that I use, uh, that I actually use this weapon, Atheon's Epilogue, uh, just because we're up close and personal with uh, the enemy, okay? So on the Oracles, I run the shield in the next section, when uh, when the shield is available if I wasn't running the shield then I would probably use it to take down the uh, the harpies and the oracles 
Um, another time that I would use it, uh, but since I'm typically the shield runner, I don't, when you're on the final stage and you're killing Atheon and you get teleported and you're one of the ones that are trying to kill the oracles or destroy the oracles when you get teleported. One guy has the shield, two guys are destroying the oracles. It's a good option. Uh, but there are also other options because um, of the distance that uh, the oracles are at in some cases that I would probably recommend more so using the scout rifle if you have it. But if Atheon's epilogue is the only weapon you have that you've upgraded for oracle damage uh, for the, from the Vault of Glass, then it's definitely a suitable gun and highly recommended. Any oracle damage uh, dealing gun is going to be beneficial to you in the Vault of Glass, all right? One other thing I should mention, especially for PvE, has to do with the weekly Nightfall Strikes, and there have been other missions like in the Queen's Wrath where this would apply also. But typically on the Nightfall missions, you do have an elemental burn effect, all right? So in this particular case, last week with Old Russia Earth on the Devil's Lair, we had Void Burn. Void damage from any weapon deals additional damage, okay? And if you have Atheon's Epilogue like we do here, that's going to give you a significant boost in damage, especially taking down some of the bosses in these uh, Nightfall Strikes or any other uh, bosses, or even any other enemy, for that matter, in any of the other missions. Because I, I think some of the daily heroics have actually had uh, burn uh, buffs, basically, or elemental buffs in some of their missions. So let's check out Atheon's epilogue in action versus Sepix Prime. We've got some dregs and vandals here, but we're taking out Sepix. I actually started out with uh, using my LMG, just because the LMG is going to do a heck of a lot more damage than, uh, than my uh, my auto rifle, my Atheon's epilogue. But once I ran out of LMG ammo, there I am just going to town on Sepix. We've got Hyper in there beside me, obviously using his void damage weapons, and I believe his Atheon's epilogue as well. And uh, really not much of a problem with Sepix or any of the bosses in this level for that matter. I mean, you've got obviously a lot of uh, fallen, high level fallen, and Hive at the very beginning, the first uh, third of this ra uh, the strike. Then you also have the Walker and then Sepix Prime. So we didn't really have a problem with uh, with them using Atheon's Epilogue and the additional Void Damage Burn that was available on last week's Nightfall Strike. Okay, so here we are profiling Atheon's Epilogue in the Crucible. We're playing some Control and uh, I'll show you the reason that I really don't play Crucible much other than uh, getting the Iron Bounty stuff and, uh, you know, when tr Trials of Osiris comes around, uh, I'm definitely going to be playing it. But, uh, yeah, this guy's stalking me here. Uh, definitely stalking me. He keeps disappearing. He's crouching somewhere. What the hell? Yeah, so I'm going to throw a frag at him. I'm going to, yeah. One shot at that range. Okay, kidding me? Are you kidding me? The shotguns, yes, they were nerfed, but uh, not so much, okay, apparently. It's yours. So uh, okay. just to recap for you guys, the patch that came out a couple weeks ago for auto rifles reduced the base damage by 2%, reduced precision damage multiplier from 1.5 to 1.25. So your headshot bonus is no longer 1.5 from a few weeks ago. It's now 1.25. And the stability was decreased by 4 to 17%, and that's driven by stat value. So, um, you know what? It, it still doesn't feel too bad. It doesn't feel too bad. And we're going to skip to the, uh, the end of the game here and just let it go for you guys because I get kind of uh, pissed. I, I didn't use my super for the longest time and I was getting pissed off at some guys so I just ended up my super uh, using my super and we ended up destroying them at the very end so let's skip to that I hope you enjoyed our little review of Atheon's epilogue it's a pretty fantastic weapon especially in PvE with the void damage bonus it's uh, it's awesome and the or oracle disruptor in the vault of glass absolutely fantastic as well so it's a good solid auto rifle and uh, even suitable for uh, for Crucible play. Unless, of course, you have the Soros Regime fully upgraded, in which case then, you know, that's all you use. All right, so I'm just going to let it go here. Enjoy the ending, and we will see you next time.
neutralized Zone C. Well done. I could have used your talents in the field. 